Today I'm showing you how I make or how I decide on the inside diameter of jump rings and the gauge of wire. Um, my mom bought me some silver round wire at 18 gauge and I wanted to make a chain this uh, I call it the fishbone chain and it's consisting of three jump rings this one's a bit more of a loose chain with this one is made with tuning gauge round wire and I wrapped it around a telescoping antenna and that's what I'm working on right now so I'm showing you the process that I used to this, uh, decide on the inside diameter so this one is just a regular antenna I found it just you know outside walking around and it's a telescoping antenna so this inside antenna is smaller than this larger outside one so I'm currently wrapping around the wrapping it around with 18 gauge silver round wire to make the jump rings I decided on this because this one, a tuning gauge, a thinner wire was wrapped around the outside. So these two have similar inside uh, diameter. I say similar because there's, um, it sort of has a spring. Um, the ten tension on the wire when you're wrapping it kind of springs back. When you wrap it around, the inside diameter is actually is larger than what you're wrapping it around you can see that there is a spring it become it is um, has a has a spring effect to it so when you're wrapping it around anything the wire if, as long as it's metal it has the inside diameter is always larger than what you're wrapping it around there's on the online there's equations on gauge to inside diameter to help you design a chain with um, a different density or stiffness and and um, different uh, making the chain more loose or more see-through or less dense so this one's tuning gauge and then I found baling wire or steel wire round wire that is about 19 gauge something in between and how I measured this is with these wheels these wheels have a different gauge different gauge measurements on it so I go up with the round wire and I have it fit inside any of these slots so this one is 19 a bit of an odd size to work with with jewelry because at a jewelry supply store you'll run into even numbers like 18 and 20 so this one's 19, it fits into the 19 gauge. And this one is 20, and it only fits in the 20 slot, the 20 gauge slot. So, and this one is the silver round wire that I'm currently making is 18 gauge. So they're a bit different sizes. I didn't do any of the math on the inside diameter ratios to gauge then uh, gauge diameter so all I'm doing is I'm looking at this chain and I see how thick it is how um, stiff it's very stiff I even um, I'm worried that it could wrap around the wrist if I were to continue this chain this, I used up I only found a short piece of uh, steel wire and I used up the whole thing to make this little chain so I compared these two this one made with a larger inside diameter at 20 gauge and this one being made with 19 gauge with a smaller inside diameter so I'm shooting for something in between these the 18 gauge being thicker than this with the same inside diameter and uh, 18 gauge being uh, with a larger 
inside diameter than this one. So it will be loose than this and more dense than this. And that is what I'm shooting for by wrapping it around these, this uh, anten teles telescoping antenna. So this part, this chain was wrapped around this, this section. And this chain was wrapped around this section of the antenna. I there's so many um, there's a limited things that you can buy store buy or uh, buy at the store that has different inside diameter or has diameters that you can wrap silver around or whatever metal around um, nickel brass copper and I just go to find even other th uh, thicknesses of wire even I've wrapped around um, I've wrapped wire around uh, different gauges of wire such as a uh, 12 gauge or 10 gauge of uh, copper uh, just because the 12 and 10 gauge is also found in electric wire and I just strip it and then I'll use the the diameter of the copper wire of a like 10 gauge wire and um, for the inside diameter of a, of a jump ring so I'll first make this coil and I, how I started this as I have uh, several pliers, but I have I use this plier. It's flat. Uh, inside is flat. Flat because if it's flat, it'll use. It'll go up when I use it. It'll go up against the wire, and in theory, will give less um, indentations on the wire. The harder you press it, you'll you'll eventually flatten the wire. But as opposed to one with teeth inside it to help grip it. And it's just to lessen the amount of uh, scrap. So if I want to lessen the amount of scrap, I'll even wrap the beginning part around the dowel, the cylinder. So I'll wrap, I'll grab the tip with the pliers and start start the wrapping process. And see, and I you heard that if you heard that click, that's the pliers sliding off of the wire itself so I was starting off like this where I'll grab it on one end and then keep turning it and that's how I started it that's the spring coming it's springing back so once I start it I'll go ahead and hand coil it around the dowel just like this and as one hand gets it helps if you're ambidextrous. It helps if you start coiling it with the opposite end, opposite hand, and uh, spinning it the opposite direction. And uh, I just go through it the whole way. I'm gonna coil this whole. With, this one's. I start off with an eight feet of uh, silver round wire. You can use triangle wire. I've seen chains made with square wire. And it just has a different texture to the overall chain. It has a different look. And that's just all part of designing the chain. So the whole point of using, I make these short chains just to get a good idea of how well it can uh, flex and, and uh, form around a wrist. Uh, I'm gonna make these into bracelets. How well it flows if um at the according to the curvature of the hand that i'm hoping it's not going to be uh, too stiff to even uh consider that the curvature of the wrist is uh too much for the chain to curve around this one i'm too worried it, it can stand it can be so stiff that it won't it'll it'll stay up on its own just from how uh, part, from how tightly the chain is made so it it can hold up on its own right there that's exactly what I'm worried about I'm worried about it not curving um, enough around the wrist because uh, I've made chains where they were so tight that the wire had to be bent just to keep have it curve around the wrist so it could clasp together Otherwise, it would be uh, a giant hoop of a chain, and maybe that's what the look you're going for. You'll never know, even 
even when you're, and that's why I don't like those uh, equations, the, the ratios between inside diameter and gauge of the wire to make the jump rings is, in is because I like making chains with different materials and when their measurements are in millimeters and if you can imagine how if you were to describe the difference between these two measurements just the inside diameters between these two this chain and this chain the difference is so great that you can see it but it is hard to actually in reality to measurement here measure it here is the millimeter side of the ruler and the difference between this side of this part of the dowel and this side of the dowel is a fraction of a millimeter difference so I'm looking at it myself and yeah, maybe yeah it's about like a half a millimeter difference to accurately measure fractions of a millimeter would require a microscope and a decimeter ruler which most people don't have the access to instead I would just rather look at the what each size will produce so at the end after this I'll be cut hand coping sawing it with uh, uh, to make the jump rings because there are I've looked at store-bought uh, for instance like at Walmart I've looked at store-bought jump rings and it looks like they're cut with a wire cutter the wire cutter works by having two sharp ends mash the wire to the point where the ends of the wire are uh, pointed ends like almost like the um, there's, there's an edge to it and there's two faces to the end of the jump rings and when you try and close the jump rings there it's not flush when you cut with the coping saw it is uh, very flush and you can put the jump rings back together and the ends will be end to end at a very uh, flush finish you can file it at the end and make it um, less uh, it won't be so sharp of an end but I, that's why I like to hand make these chains from hand turning these coils to hand cutting it with a coping saw so I've gotten through the cutting for most of it <laughs> And I've gotten a lot of the jump rings done. Um, and what I'm doing is I'm getting through these, the last bit of it. So I've got a little bit left. And I'm just going to cut through it. I've, I've had a, a long coil of uh, the 18 gauge round wire. I'm going through it through a coping saw. To make it cut easier through it, I use wax. This is just regular candle wax. They sell specific uh, type of wax for the cutting with the coping saw at jewelry supply places. So I just used the wax from a candle. And I'll hold it, the last part of it, with my three fingers. And I'll hold it and cut through it. Just uh, Before I'll cut through it really quick. But I start at the top angle. Uh, top side of it and uh, and just continue going through it and so I just cut through by hand with the coping saw because it guarantees that uh, I can cut it and the ends will be flush and what I do is I have a way of looking at the looking at it through the uh, through this uh, top part of the coping saw this part of the coping saw I'll look through it um, and in between it I'll focus on the coping saw blade so I'll be cutting through it like this and that helps me aim at a more straight cut and I also look through the I also look through the through the coil and position the
coil and the blade uh, aligned through the middle. So I've got about two more cuts to go through, or two more, two more of the wire. Another thing to focus on is to angle it, because if you don't angle it and cut through it straight through, you'll start cutting through the bottom part of the coil. The whole point is just to cut through one side of the coil. That way you end up with a single jump ring after every cut instead of two halves. So angle it and then cut through the center. So I'm just I'm almost done with this coil. And I just want to show the middle the ending of it. So eight feet of wire made a pretty long coil and almost done with it so one more cut through and we'll have the the very last jump ring cut through here after this I'll start putting it into the chain the chain that I showed you before is called a king's chain and it's just uh, uh, with the chain I'm making it's uh, three jump rings to make one um, one pattern you just repeat that single pattern over and over so three chains make up one pattern you make it over and over let's see just looking around to see where my pointers are So let me count how much I got here. One hundred and sixty seven jump rings from eight feet of wire and we'll see if um we'll go ahead and put together the jump rings. What I have been calling the herringbone or fishbone chain was uh, is actually a king's chain it's pretty popular online you can find it uh, online where uh, they'll teach you how to make the chain and there's several different uh, starting points but I got I'll start with two jump rings right here and then I'll have several I always try and keep a lot of them open uh, a lot of the jump rings open before I start so I'll open them up and I just start with two of them and put two through and try and, uh, and then I'll close it. And if they're closed enough, um, I'll keep an eye look at it from the top. This one is kind of interesting. This one has the jump rings connected like this. So I'm going to try and bend it up some more. See now it's a bit more a bit more straight. So a lot more straight and then what I can see is looking on the side I can see that this one when it connected it came up a little bit higher so I'll go ahead and close it okay and I, I'm the final test is just to feel it and then uh, if it's rough 
and uh, I can feel that it's already a lot smoother so instead of what I could do from here is I could file it and uh, that um, I'm gonna try and not file it this time around because filing adds more uh, marks on it so what I had just done was I had gone through the corner of my pliers and pressed down on it just to press against the silver it's it's malleable to be pressed down just by the pressure pressure of the pliers and that is a lot smoother smooth to the point where I, I don't feel that there's no need for any um, filing and I can I can barely see the the where they join together so I've done that with these ones when they closed them up I had uh, felt them and make sure that they were smooth so I have two in one right now and that'll fan out like this and you can see the first part of the pattern starting so we'll go ahead and you can see so the next one from the direction I'm going I got two and then I got one in there the next thing is to have two more so I'll go ahead and put two more in well I'll put one at a time and when they're open just the jump rings are open like this you can see how fast you can go that it's much faster so the process goes a lot faster uh, it'll be smoother if you used the coping saw and went through it um, straight the ends will be will connect really flush now sometimes usually if you coping saw through the jump rings really quick the jump rings can have a rough um, ends uh, the, I I understand it that the jump the coping saw blade will grab a larger chunk of silver as it's cutting through it and the slower you go um, the cooler the saw the silver is when you're cutting through it and that's the case with any metal uh, copper is one that I think has a um, is really prone to getting heated up through the abrasion of the coping saw blade actually we've used a Dremel blade uh, we had a foreman uh, with a cutting with a saw tip or saw end and uh, we we cut through jump rings all at uh, a coil to make jump rings all at once and it actually shattered um, the blade so there's a speed limit to copper for sure with silver you can pretty much go with it as fast as you can except you end up with more rough um, jump rings jump rings that you might have to uh, file when you're putting them together that one was put together so smoothly uh, it's not it's really really smooth just putting it together so when you coping saw it really straight when you use the pliers and put it on really straight it'll be really smooth that there's no I can't feel any roughness I'm just gonna go over it once over through here like that and yep that was really smooth so this one so now that I've put two through that first ring, well actually the third ring, you can start to see the pattern come out. So grab any of the two rings and just repeat the same pattern. So the, the first five rings is basically two and then one and two. So we'll do that once again after a while you'll start to see that uh, it won't be able to fold back you'll um, 
the ends will stay with those two hanging there can change that add just one more to it So we've got two, three, five, six in here. And then you fold this one in. So when it's laying this way, you fold this one down. And then flip it back up and have it go through here. Now if we want to and put one through on this side okay, we'll come in through this top part that's the easy way to understand it that way you're not making mistakes otherwise you could just fold these ones up and bring this one in so you got you got the similar pattern and you go through two so close this one up Then just position them if it gets confusing. So this one you can see that the angle there's an angle to the the jump rings, the middle jump ring that so you can continue that angle so to know which direction you fold it it uh, you can look at the angle to match it so it wouldn't work if you put that last jump ring so the last jump rings right here this last one hanging down we fold it in on the top and continue the pattern then next one so after this next one, it's going to stay, that pattern will stay, the, the middle one will stay. This last one will always fall down. So that one will, that one will stay after you put this one on. It's pretty smooth. There we go. 
So I've gotten, I then done ha half of it. I got into the halfway point and it, by that point I had used eight feet of wire and had done, it turned out to be eight inches. So eight feet of wire make eight inches with this setup, with the current setup that I'm using. Um, so that's, it takes a lot of experimentation once, even if you think you got an equation down, uh, once you change material, once you change the inside diameter just by a little bit, the, the, the results change. So I always, I do a, a little bit at a time, like I'll buy uh, four feet of, you know, or I'll do four inches at first. And record how much feet I had done so I'm coming down to the very last bit I just got a handful of jump rings left and it's getting close to eight um, so half to make half this chain took eight inches uh, and I got another eight feet of wire so a total of 16 feet of wire is currently coming to about 16 inches of this chain so when I finish this up I'll go ahead and measure it and just again if earlier I wasn't too clear on how I made the chain um, I just I get it do two then one two and one so we're at two and then I get I just put after this I'll fold it back so I'll go ahead and get this one in and very rarely I'll have I have brought out the the file so I don't file every single time this one so I just grab both of I grab the top and the bottom the opening is right here and I can see that the ring is like this so I'm going to press it on top these top parts uh, on end to end not end to end but on the opposite ends of the jump ring and I'll push it and then this part will slide so it's now like this the jump ring is in this position and when I press it it's going to slide to become more flush So I got two and then one again. So according to to go with the rest of the chain, I'll move this one up. The last ring I just put in, put it up and then separate the two jump rings. You can see it be continuous with the rest of the chain. Then I, I'll put two more. this one it's it's like this it's off a little bit so I'm gonna make it back together see that that was flush that's already good right there I don't need to do anything 
So this is the second jump ring. And in between working, when you're done for the day, or you're going to take a long break from it, uh, it's good to have put it in a bag, uh, an airtight bag, um, and um, so uh, and then just keep it from tarnishing. So I've got the two on there at the end. And what I'll do is I'll just fold, look at the rest of the chain and let them fall where they're going to be and then hold it. And then you can see if you're, you know, you can see that it's eventually going to be in. So you can go ahead and put it through here. And it's, it'll go fit with the rest of the chain. To make this chain to get to this point has taken me 12 hours, 12 and a half hours. So, uh, I had to, I took, you know, I would stop the timer, you know, take breaks, and mainly take breaks because uh, you keep going at this process with the pliers especially when you're wrapping the the wire around the dowels they'll your hands can get a workout and um, you'll feel that those um, tendonitis symptoms or carpal tunnel symptoms coming about so it's just good to take a break here and there And at the end, I'm just going to start a different, um, just do a simple one in one chain because this chain doesn't do too well when you make the chain all the way completely to the end. It, it, it can um, be a little confusing to try and get the chain perfect when you're putting it on, especially if you 
put the necklace on behind your neck without seeing it it's hard to get that chain laying just right so to make it a little bit easier we'll have a little bit of a, a simpler chain leading up to the clasp just so it's a little bit easier to handle when for practicality reasons when you're trying to put the necklace on This is what I was talking about. I already got just three and three right there, so there'll be four a little bit left. Measuring without the the simple chain right here, the actual chain, all the way to 12 inches. Gives us to four inches right there so four, 14 plus 12 16 inch chain that's not including the not including the clasp or the extra little jump rings right there so this is using 16 feet of wire making made a decent size 16 inch chain <laughs> 